Today, we're testing some snare drum hacks. Some are pretty simple and innocent, while others are, uh, more out there. Also, we're gonna be playing a game with Tim, who's mixing the drum audio in this video. For every hack he can guess based on just the audio, he'll win 25 bucks. For those of you that are gonna be in the comments like, this is so obvious, it isn't. <laughs> Got the Bluetooth rim. I don't think you can get fatter than that. All right, should be pretty simple. Just uh, take off the rim. So let's compare this to the tried and true drum head hack. This one is definitely a lot more slappy and of course is very, very fat. What if we combine them though? I think we've already reached maximum fatness. This drum sounds very dead. It sounds very choked. It doesn't sound like a big fat snare. It sounds thicker than that like a plastic folder you would take to like math class in school. Um, so I'm gonna say that this hack is a cheap way to mute a drum and I'm gonna say that uh, it's like a some kind of folder. On most snare drums, there's a shell with some lugs, some brooms and tension rods, a set of snares, a coated head on the batter side and a snare side on the snare side of the snare. And it's these thin snare side heads that allow the wires to be super responsive even at the lowest dynamics. And I'm sure you can imagine the amount of odd and weird requests I get on my channel, but one that really stuck with me was someone that said they put a coated head on their snare side. This snare side head is uh, pretty used, so we're gonna do it on this drum. I'm going with an ambassador coated because I got another comment that said that John Bonham might have used a coated head on the snare side. I don't know how true that is, but if you know, drop a comment. This feels so wrong. I mean, it might work. Okay, that just sounds like a snare drum to me. <laughs> but it does kind of sound like a snare drum that's like, the head is dead or going bad. Um, it sounds like when you get like a warped, like like someone's been bashing on a drum head and it's got some dents in it and stuff. It sounds a little bit like that. So I'm gonna guess that this is some kind of trick to try and restore the life from an old drum head. That kind of hack where you're trying to give new life to an old drum head. This is a kick drum, and this is a kick port, which claims to enhance the kick drum sound somehow. Hello, good sir, I'd like to purchase this. <laughs> okay. And this is a bass woofer. If I had to guess, it probably does the same thing as the kick port. I tried to find one of these, but I couldn't, so I got the kick port. But for all of the viewers with a sharp eye, you might have noticed that that is not a bass drum. Have you ever put one on a snare drum? Is that what you're doing? Wait, are you putting one on the side of a snare drum? No, the batter head. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna hope that the uh, the black dot on here doesn't screw anything up, but I think this is like a template for where to cut, if I had to guess. So I'll go ahead and just trace that. Then I'm gonna use these dividers to cut it. Got it aligned perfectly. Eh, perfectly enough, it's a little off. Make sure this thing is really on there. And now this little gasket thing comes off. We slide the port in and then slide this thing back down and it's installed. I just now thought of this. Hopefully this isn't too long to fit in the snare. Oh, we're good. Got like an inch of space.
All right, so the pitch of the drum is way up, and I think that's because um, there's something on top of it. There, it sounds like he's hitting something on top of a snare drum. The pitch of the drum is up, so I'm gonna say that this is some kind of heavy thing. It sounds solid, it sounds like metal or something. I think there's a weight on top of the snare drum to give you a cool, like, kind of hip hoppy, high tuned snare vibe, and then also another texture to hit as it bounces against the snare. If you have a bunch of snares in the same room as your drum set, or right next to you as you're recording a voiceover, <laughs> then they can be pretty annoying. Okay, so I love having my snare drums here because I sit right there. All oh, it's gotta have easy access to your snares. Now, the problem with that is that every once in a while, they'll rattle. Subscribe. One trick I learned was to use a coaster. And now, you can just go and they don't, make noise anymore. All right, we're going iPhone mode on this. These six snare drums are the only snares in the studio that have their snares on. And here I have a lifetime supply of snare drum wire dampeners. That wasn't very smart. Now, whenever I talk, you can't hear the snare. So cheap coasters for the win. Uh... I saw this photo, I wasn't gonna test it, but I think it'll be fun for Tim to try and guess what this hack is because it won't really change the sound of the drum. But I've seen all sorts of snares with different wires and straps and strings attached to them as the snare strap. So really you can use anything in a pinch like this water bottle. Probably could have used a better bottle, but this is all I had. They're just barely long enough to work, but short enough to be super annoying. Okay, again, just kind of <laughs> sounds like a snare drum. Um, let's see if these little clippies here give us anything. I mean, the snare sounds a little muffled. Like, the, the full-on ring isn't quite there. It sounds like there's something preventing the drum from being super ringy. I'm gonna say it's those, like, um, slap hand things on the snare, like the dollar store moon gel things. I'm gonna say that it's one of those dampening the snare drum. That's just kind of what it sounds like. It just sounds like a snare that has, like, a moon gel on it. Whenever the cowboy drummer posts anything, you will tag me like your life depends on it. The inception snare, the cymbal heads, the head cymbals, this thing, the floor clock, and the list goes on. Attaching a snare drum to the bottom of a floor tom. He even did this to a full drum set. Start by getting rid of this. We will need some of the tension rods later though. Now we take our donor snare and get rid of this head. Now I have four tension rods from the snare. I'll start these loosely and go on every other lug. Now I'll fill in the rest of the holes with the floor tom tension rods facing the wrong way. I'm scared to play this thing. That doesn't sound very good. <laughs> this is totally awesome. This is like a war drum. If I was a drummer in the Civil War, this would be my snare. Hmm. 
It sounds like a it sounds like a field drum. It sounds like a like a old marching drum. I'm gonna go that this is a rack tom that has been converted to a snare drum. If you're watching this and you're thinking, man, I would have killed this, I don't think you would have. It's way harder than you think. Cause at least two of those just sounded like snare drums to me. Hopefully I win 25 bucks. Well, Tim, you did just that. I'll give you that last one, and you were pretty close on some of the others, and the sounds you described were spot on. But as always, you know the deal. Drop a comment if you would use any of these hacks yourself. So thanks for watching. I got some revolutionary war beats to go learn.